Hey guys, this is E with Scott Cooking with Me, and today we're going to do Rachel's challenge. Now, <laughs> she is really challenging me on this one because normally I have a really hard time doing collages and then stamping on them and all of that kind of stuff. But I have pulled out lots of my scraps here. They're just in like neutral colors, a little bit of green and blue in there. And I'm just going to start collaging like she did. And we'll see. Now I'm using this old music page for one of my backgrounds because this is very brittle. And I just want to strengthen it a little bit. So I'm going to use that. Use my new ruler. Let's see. And we'll just start. That's all we can do, right? Just start. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And I am just putting this down because I'm going to collage on that next. And I'm just going to put my glue down so that I get it on that page and then I'll just use that page next. I normally don't collage on book pages because I use them and I um, just collage on my mat. But this time I'm going to try to do a little bit different so I can just save some product. So we'll just collage and talk. How's that sound? Then we'll do some stamping. Well, we'll do some inking or painting. And then stamping. And then we'll cut them up or we'll cut them up first and then do the stamping. I don't know. I don't remember how she did it. <laughs> I think we cut them up first. But we'll get it done one way or the other. I'm going to grab this little ruler because I don't want this edge jagged. So we have, yeah, like I said, this is a challenge because normally, I mean, this is a lot to do in a video. But we'll see if we can get it done. I don't, I don't do painting and things like that like Rachel does. So we might... <laughs> We might regret this. <laughs> we might make a big old mess. Okay, let's see what we got. A little bit of that on there. That's some that I made a big mess on, so we'll just use it. Now there will be bits and pieces of this that will be cut out just simply because I um, have to wait for things to dry in between times. So the little bits and pieces that will be cut out. Let's see. I don't think I want to put that on there. There's another little piece we could put down here somewhere. Yeah, I usually use my little glue mat over there when I'm doing things like this, but I've got my glue mat buried. I tell you, my desk looks like a tornado swept through. One did sweep through outside, but not inside. So, so the inside of my house should look pretty good. I think. Now we're going to cut this up, so I'm trying to keep in mind that I need to do lots of different colors on here so we don't have just a bland effect. Or lots of different shades, I should say. So, I got glops of glue. Very humid here today, so we're supposed to get some, I think, some more storms through sooner or later. That's something I don't want, but. I don't think anybody wants a storm, do they? Let's see. I'm going to pull out some of this straw paper and that piece would look good on there. We'll put that piece right there. All right, I went ahead and grabbed out my little glue mat because I got that paper really sticky. And this I can just wipe off if it gets sticky. We shouldn't have to add a lot of 
glue to that paper though. Uh oh, we left a little white edge there so we'll cover that up. This is a little piece of paper bag that I colored on so let's just put that across there and it'll cover up that little white edge. Kind of bring all those edges together. And I think we'll put a little straw paper on there. Now, I've had many questions about straw paper. And I answered it in the video yesterday, I think. And if you will, all you have to do is Google it if you want to know what straw paper is. Just Google. It'll tell you. But I don't know that we have it around here in the United States. I got mine from Rachel. They use it over there for the... Um, placemats on their tables. I have a little piece of Edith Holden page here. I got that one a little gluey so we wiped that off. All right, I got this little piece that I uh, think, I want to say this was a digital that someone sent to me, just a piece of one. So we'll use it. And I think I might just put a little piece of it right there. But it looks like it's just been splattered with ink, doesn't it? So how is everyone? How are you guys doing? Okay, let's put a little piece of this down here and then we'll fill in that little gap right there and that should be it on this page. color have we? Oops. Better glue that down better. What color have we missed on here? We haven't put any of this color, so let's put a little strip of that down through there. So Brooklyn came over today and helped us work. Brooklyn and Presley and Alicia. Because we had lots of Orders to get out. Plus we had, whoops. Plus we had the um, e kits that went out today. So they come over and helped us work, and that sure was a lot of help. I'm telling you. All right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put anything right here. That's a very brittle little edge, so I think it would just tear off. I'm just going to trim this. And I know it probably is not trimmed straight because I trimmed it just by hand, but we'll straighten it up when we cut it into pieces in a little while. I'm going to lay that little piece aside and let it dry just a little bit. Wait, first I think I'm going to put just a little bit. No. We'll let it dry a little bit and we will do another. Let's grab this one that we already have some sticky on. Let's start off with that. Start off with a bright blue. And I'm just going to put that whole thing on there. I can cover part of it up if I need to, or when I cut it up, it's going to be in different pieces anyway. Now, you don't have to do pieces that are perfectly like squared off or whatever like I'm doing. These just happen to be in my stash. Usually when I have a piece of paper that is left over, if it's got some pieces cut out of it or, you know, if it's a little bit jagged, I usually just go ahead and, and cut it off, round it off. But you can...
just put whatever you want on there. I'm going to put that little piece in there. I like that little piece of paper sack. And I love, love, love this little tool for this kind of thing. It sure flattens it out good. I do have more of those ordered, so if, if you want one, they should be in in about probably five days, usually. That's what it takes us to get them. So, where are we going to put this one? I think I'll put it down here. Let's put that one down through there. I'm just going to cut off that little flat part. I think I'll put a little piece of this on there. I don't want a big piece. I may even put two little pieces. Just to bring in some color. You might put a little piece across there, like that. I don't want those ends even. That's why I am moving it over a little bit. And then I might put the other one right there. All right, let's grab some more. Let's see. Let's do that one right there, maybe. We'll just trim it off. I don't think we'll need the whole piece, so I'm not going to put glue on all of it. Aaron came over. I have to tell y'all this. He came over and cleaned for me today. Wednesdays is his day to clean. So... He has worked over here every day this week because so, he's worked in the store and helped with the orders and all of that. So he came over and helped. And when he got finished with his list, you have to make him a list. He has to have a list so that he can check it off. So when he got finished with his list, he was showing his daddy and his daddy said, Oh, Aaron, you have really worked hard this week. And he said, Yes, sir. And I said, yeah, he has. Do you think I owe you about $25, Aaron? <laughs> and he said, Nene, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, that boy. He knew he had worked much harder than that. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of this little bitty scrap of this drawing paper here. Just a little teeny scrap that I had. Put that right there. And then I need a little piece right there, but I want to break this blue up a little bit more. I kind of went a little bit crazy there. So, I'm trying to decide how I want to break it up. I think I'll break it up like that right there and then we'll break it up again in a little bit All right I've got this Edith Holden book page and I think I'll put it up here but I'm gonna tear a little bit off of it My paper almost slid right out of the camera. All right, let's put a little piece of this down there. I'm knocking everything over. Okay, we'll do that. This one's really wild. Okay, I don't mind that though. Well, I'm going to trim this off. And then I'm going to cover the back. Well, I may trim them first. I don't know. I like how Rachel covered the backs on hers. And she trimmed them first and then covered them. So let's see if we can trim this one first. Make sure it's glued pretty good. So let me grab my trimmer. Let's see. Um... First off, I want to make sure that the edge is straight. 
since I did do a little bit of trimming on it. Then and I'm going to move this for now. Make sure this end is straight. Straight-ish. Now we can make some tags that are that's three and a half right there. Go ahead and cut that. And then we can cut this way and make a couple more that are not quite so big. So I like that. That's three nice looking tags. Well, they will be when we finish, maybe. All right. Let's go ahead and trim this little piece off. Now, I think we'll do the same cut. Like three and a half, maybe. Ooh, that looks a little wide. But I think it's, it is three and a half. I'm just going to trim the edge a little bit and then we'll turn it and we'll go this way. And this one we'll just cut at three. Okay, now comes the part. <laughs> now comes the painting part. I should wait and let this dry a little bit more, but I'm, I'm not going to. We're going to pull out maybe the one from the bottom since it was glued last or first. Okay, now I don't have the paints that Rachel does, but I do have some picket fence and then I always have my white gesso. So we'll just see what we can do with them. We'll put a little bit picket fence in there and that one. And let's see, I think I want to use a little bit of this. This is a re-inker. I've not done this before, so I have no idea how this is going to work. But it's a good time to try. So what I'm going to do is, this is Victorian Velvet re-inker. And I'm going to put just a drop in there. <laughs> just one drop. And we're going to see if this will change the color a little bit. I might have to put more than one drop. I don't know. No, I won't either. That changed the color quite a bit. And I didn't make up very much because I don't want to do many tags in this. I just wanted to do one or two. So it's a pretty... Victorian velvet color. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to use my little angled brush that I use on everything just about. And we're just going to go like a whitewash. We're just going to put it like a whitewash. We don't want to cover everything up, but we just want to give a blend effect to everything. Now, if you want it even lighter, you can add a little water to it. And you don't want to make your, like you don't want to make all of your brush strokes the same length, all of that. You want it to be a little bit abstract, <laughs> I guess you could call it. Just come down a little ways on some of them and not so far on the others. Now, I don't want to waste this color, so I'm going to take an old book page. And I'm just going to smush it on there. All right, I'll lay that aside and let that dry. And I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to wipe this little thing out so that we can go with another color. All right, that worked pretty good. So I think we'll use a little bit more of this. And again, that is Picket Fence Distress Paint. I'm not sure if we have any more in stock or not. I can't see it from here. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Faded Jean. You know I like my blues and my greens. And I put two tiny little drops in there because this this one is a little bit different than the other. And we'll stir it up. Ooh, may have to add some water to this, but that'll be okay. Or more paint. Okay, let's do this. We'll take our brush out and instead of drying it all the way 
we're going to use it. That way we'll have a little bit of water in here to kind of dilute it. I like that color though. That's pretty. All right, let's just do this one. Why not? Ooh, that one's going to be bright-ish, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Now when it dries, it's going to dry lighter. Keep that in mind. So don't put it on and think, oh my goodness, I've messed everything up. It's going to dry lighter. Well, since I've already stuck my finger in that one, let's go ahead and put a little on there. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab that book page. And we're just going to smoosh this paint in there. Now, I think this time, let's try some gesso. Oh, let's see. Let's try a little bit of gesso, and we'll water it down, because gesso is pretty thick. So, in case you just have gesso, you can use it. I'm going to put a little bit of water in it. And that'll just kind of water it down so it won't be so thick. And of course I'm making a big old mess and that's just the way I do when I paint or stamp or anything, but that's okay. I don't mind. Before we add any color, I am going to paint one with the white. Or maybe two. I don't know. One or two. This time I'm going to dry my brush because we already put water in there. I'm dry it, not all the way, but I'm going to dry it some. And I'm mainly going to use what's on here. I'm going to pull that off with my brush. Now it's kind of lumpy because I didn't stir it up real well, I guess, but it's okay. It'll work. I think I watered it a little bit too much. <laughs> I told you this is not my, this is not my thing, but we're going to do it. I don't shy away from anything. Okay. Since you're not playing fair, we're going to put a little bit of white paint in there with you. You can mix different things with just so it doesn't hurt a thing. That will be good. That will be good. All right. Now, I think I want to add a little bit of alcohol ink, and this is in caramel. So let's see what happens with it. Now this, I know we'll only need to add a drop because, whoops, see that comes out very fast. And we probably got it way too dark now, but um, you don't need to add much of that at all. It's very concentrated. Well, that might not be too much. We might have to put a little bit of paint in there with it. Well, I'm liking that caramelly look. I don't know if you can see that. It's real mocha. <laughs> All right, so we got one more. Let's go ahead. I'm going to put it a little bit darker even. I'm playing with fire. I kind of like that color. Now I may have to add more paint because I really don't have anything in here. We'll see. I just don't like to waste anything, so I don't put very much out. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more paint. Um, I want to cover that white up, I mean that blue up, as much as I can. Okay. 
way. There we go. Real mocha y. Mocha y. Okay. All right. Let's. I'm going to let these dry. And then we'll come back and get started stamping on them and all of that kind of stuff. And I'll probably use my heat tool to dry these. It will not hurt a thing. Use your heat tool whenever you can. I'm very impatient. I don't like to wait on things to dry. So I will most likely use my heat tool on it. So we have all of those backed. That pretty paper. And they're nice and, I won't say stiff, but they're nice and firm now. So now comes the moment of truth. <laughs> We're going to stamp them. Now, I have put a few stamps out here. All of them are Tim Holtz. So I think I'll start out with this one. And I will put the links to all the stamps below. And I am using uh, VersaFine Sepia ink and I think I'm going to use the sepia ink all the way through and I'm not exactly going to center it I think I'm going to put it off a little bit to the side okay that didn't go so bad so we'll try another I think I'll do this little blue one here with the same stamp. And I think I'll stamp all of them first and then I'll go back and add whatever I might want to add. And I just hold my ink there for a while just so that it can transfer. And since we've got this paint on there, it takes it a little bit longer too. So there, I don't mind that. I don't mind that light color that doesn't bother me at all. Okay, lay those up there. Let those begin to dry. Then I'm going to use this one, and this is from the Tim Holtz. Oh, I can't remember what the name of it is. And I think I'll stamp it right there. Anyway, like I said, I'll put the links to the stamps below. And I didn't get all of his at one time. I got them over a period of many years. So that's why I have a few. I don't get anything real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I get it you know I just I've been doing this for many many years so I just do this over a period of time that I get what I have a lot of people think oh my goodness you spend so much money no I do not either I don't have that kind of money to spend these are all things that I have had for many years pretty. I like that. Okay. Another one here. I think I'll go back to this one. Then I've got one more that's really tall and I'm going to go with this stamp. It's tall and slender. I may have messed up on that one. I think I bounced it a little bit. Well, maybe not. Okay. Now, the ink that's on here, I'm not going to waste. So, I am going to take this piece of paper that we colored. And I'm going to stamp these off. I don't like to waste the ink. Oh, I like that. Pretty, pretty. All right, we can use those pieces in one of our crafts. 
Now, Rachel also took a smaller stamp and, made, and stamped at the bottom or top or whatever. So I'm going to use this little stamp, and this is one of... Oh, my mind just went blank. I can't find it anymore. Somebody found it not too long ago. But um, if you know what it is, leave it below. I can't remember. It's her handwriting. She has a YouTube channel. If I think of it, I'll write it on the screen. And that just says memories. And I think I'll put memories on this one. I can see her face. <laughs> and I can see her YouTube channel, but I cannot remember her name to save my life. Right, and then I'm going to flip it over to the other side. And this one says fabulous. So pretty. She has a very beautiful handwriting. Let's see, I may do this one at the t Well, it's going to come into that writing on that stamp, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway at the bottom. Because at the top, we're going to do something else. I don't mind that. I do not mind that. Gabriella. That's her name, Gabriella. Don't know her last name, but that's her YouTube channel. Gabriella. And I, I bought this stamp from her many years ago. So I haven't been able to find it anymore for people because everybody wants it when I use it. But, um, you know, if somebody does know where you can get it, then you're welcome to tell them in the comments below. Right, so that is our stamping done. Um, now we're going to cut them into a tag shape. And I'm just going to eyeball it and cut them off. And then I think I'll just use this one to kind of go by on some of them that are the same size. Okay, those. This one, I think I'll cut it into a tag shape too. It's tall, but it's wide, so we'll make it a tag. And then this one, I think I'll do a little journaling card with it. So I think I'll just round the corners on this one. Oops. There we go. And then, let's see. Might make a little journaling card out of this one, too. Okay. Right, let's see. What are we going to do with this one? Now, on this one, I'm going to use the new returning punch. A lot of you have been wanting this one, so we do have it in stock now. Uh, I think that Melina has already added everything in that came in today. So it punches the little corners. has three different sizes on there. So like I said, that is in. Um, if it's not in the store right this second, it will be tonight. I'm going to use some of the new digital that I have. This is the Labels Digital. And it's got 35 labels on this page. And I have cut just a few out. So I'm thinking I want to use this one with the birds on here. And I think I'm just going to put it at the top like that. I'm not going to try to back it right now. I might back it before I put it in the journal. But right now I think I'm just going to glue it right at the top. You could always wrap it around if you wanted to. Yeah, I like that. I like that little bit of brown behind those birds in with that label. Maybe it's 
clear enough that you can see it. Now on this one I feel like we need something else. So I've got a little piece of Florentine paper here. Let's see which one I got a couple of pieces. I think I want to use a piece of this one. I'm just going to run a little piece down the side just to give it a little bit of oomph. It just seems a little plain. It, it was pretty wide and that flower is not very big. So I'm just going to run a little piece down through there and we'll trim it off where I... That. Look, I stuck my, I stuck my hand all in the ink. I'm going to use my ribbon punch and punch this one and I'll put a piece of seam binding in it. That's the ribbon punch. I'll link it below. Let's see. Let's do this one. This one, I think I'm going to use a little piece of this at the top. I think we'll do it like that. And I can punch a hole in that and put a bread in it if I want. Strengthen it up a little bit. I like that. Now, I had been forgetting I wanted to use some of this washi. So let's put a little bit of this on here and there. And would you believe I can't find my favorite washi? I don't know what I've done with it. It's probably hid around here somewhere in one of my many places. But I was looking for it a minute ago and I couldn't find it. And I got distressed, so I just quit looking for it. Let's just stick it right there. There at the bottom. Alright, I'm going to put a piece on this too. Yeah, I don't know what I did with it. I'm sure it's here. It's just buried probably in all my mess. Well, I got that a little crooked, but it's too late now. Once that goes down, it's down. That's okay. We'll leave it. I think it just adds a little something too. It may just be me liking it, but I don't know. To me it does. Alright. Now let's do the big guy here. What are we going to do to him? Let's use another one of the labels. This time we'll wrap it, I think. Maybe. Oh, I don't know if we will or not. I like that blue butterfly up there. Yeah, let's just put it down that way. I'll put something behind it later when I start to add it to the journal. Now these labels don't have words on them, but you could always add words to the top. I have kept them light enough that you could put words on the top if you wanted to. Let's put a little butterfly or something on here. It's kind of funny, this piece, I don't know if I got more paint on it or what, but this piece is not drying like the other ones did. <laughs> it's not drying as well. But that could be the, the gesso one and I probably needed to have let it dry, but you know I haven't let any of mine dry. I'm just working on them. So, Alright, we've got this one. Let's see, that's got pink in it. I don't want to do that one. Let's do this punch. And no, I do not have this punch, and I don't know where you can get it. I don't, I mean, I don't have an extra. Ooh, I didn't get that punched out well. Um, it was an old Stamp It Up punch, and it is long since been retired as far as I know. You might contact a Stamp It Up administrator or demonstrator or whatever they call their self and check with them, but I don't think it's available anymore. Because I know people on Amazon and places like that are charging an arm and a leg for them. I like that. And I'll probably punch a little hole in there and put a little um, dangle on it. Alright, let's put that little piece right there, maybe. Or I might want it over here. Now 
And now we've got this one. What shall we do with this one? I might put one of these on there and let me grab another piece of paper to punch just so that it'll punch it out and not tear it maybe. Well, it still did. You know, mine is very, very, very old. It could need sharpening. I probably need to grab some aluminum foil and give it a sharpen. Had mine probably 20 years or more. Oh, I like that on there. Looks cute. Okay. Now, I'm not inking around all of these, but I will before I use them. Just because I don't want any white edges to show. Now, on this piece, I think I will put it all the way across there like that. And it'll look like that little bur butterfly is about to hop up on that flower. Butterfly cannot talk. There we go. And that is that. That is our tags. And this was Rachel's at Roxy Creation. This is her challenge that she does. I may add a few more pieces to these as I start to put them in my journal. But right now, I'm not going to. Just simply because as I put them in the journals, I'll be able to tell what I need to add on them. If I need to add the, you know, something to match the journal. So right now I'm going to leave them as they are. But we will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you will. And we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.